So over the past several decades, the United States has seen uh, a dramatic increase in overweight and obesity among children in all age groups and in all races and ethnicities. Very few children or their parents are eating even the minimum amount of fruits and vegetables that are recommended for ideal health. Less than 1% of children in the U.S meet the definition of overall cardiovascular health and it's because the majority of, of children do not take in four to five ideal levels of these components of healthy diet. The American Heart Association has put a stake in the ground and said by the year 2020 we want to improve the cardiovascular health of all Americans including children by 20 percent. Easy to say but then the obvious question is, what does that mean, and how are you going to do it? You smell it. I dare you. Eat it. Smell it. Smell it. Smell it. Smell it. Smell what? Rosemary. Smell it. Can I smell it? It smells good. I know it smells good. It's right over there, but you can only it does smell good. Yeah, it's rosemary. This is the vegetable teaching garden, and it's set up by pre-K through fifth grade students. They did all the work you know, as, as we had planned from uh, the beginning of this process. The children the other day were measuring the circumference and volume of the planters. Well, they actually did the layout of the planters themselves. They built them, and then they did the layout so that we had to know how much soil to put in each one, how much soil to order, and the children can actually do that math and figure it out. On our campus here at Grassy Waters Elementary, we are a green school of excellence. So much of what we do here is green-oriented initiative. Um, with that being said, a large component of that green component is healthy living and healthy choices. So we do that through and teach those skills through our veggie and fruit garden through American Heart Association. We plant a variety of different fruits and vegetables. We have two harvests a year, two plantings a year. Students also practice a variety of garden lesson plans in their classroom and that curriculum has also been provided to us through the American Heart Association. So we have that hands-on aspect but also the curriculum piece that aligns with our standards and is because of that warmly welcomed by our administration. Before we had the garden at our school, I didn't usually like vegetables a lot, but I did eat some bananas. And like sometimes we'll go to the store and my brother, he'll ask for not vegetables, like junk food and stuff. And I'll tell my mom not to get it. So my mom, she'll tell him no. And then that's how my brother, he started to eat fruits and vegetables. The American Heart Association created a construct, Life's Simple Seven. And Life Simple 7 is about not smoking, eating healthy, being physically active, being healthy weight, healthy blood pressure, healthy blood cholesterol, healthy blood glucose. Those seven things, when they are at their best, equal ideal cardiovascular health, equal ideal health. We have that construct for children. Teaching gardens allow us to focus on the healthy eating part of it, particularly focusing on fruits and vegetables. They all journal in the garden. Um, a few of our schools have a regular schedule where if it's Wednesday and it's noon, you're in the garden journaling, and that's kind of cool, so they pick a day. And the, the children just come up with wonderful things, how the garden makes them feel, and it's always happy things, and it's always things that make them feel more self-confident. I can tell that the garden is useful because we can use it through a bunch of different things, math, science, writing. I also noticed that it kind of helps us learn a little bit more in that subject. They're having us um, make faces and then discuss the fruits and vegetables that we use. It helps keep us healthy. Our immune system is so important. Did you notice that the carrots are in so many different colors? There's a red and purple and orange and yellow. The only color we don't have there is the greens and the white. All right, what about red? Rashford, you want to tell us something? It can help make new cells for our body. My favorite part about this garden is that it actually 
lets us to express our feelings about nature and the way it is. I like to eat them and, and get my hands dirty. I like to have fun every day in the garden and play with water and sun. Aside from those crucial life skills of really teaching children that they are in charge of their health. They are in charge of the food that they eat and what they put into their body. And that is a learned behavior that some of our students, unfortunately, would not be taught elsewhere if it weren't for our, on our campus at our school. They're nourishing their mind, they're nourishing their spirit. And the rollover effect is that the kids are going home with this produce, so they're teaching their parents. Our families are, are forced almost forced to feed their kids these different options because now the children know what they should be eating. They are trying more new stuff that they wouldn't have before. Like this was always lettuce, but when I show it to them now, that's cabbage. And it has a brother that's purple cabbage. The children are really getting a lot of peer pressure to eat healthier when they've worked in the garden and some of the kids just love it so much that it becomes kind of a very social thing where my mom made you know, such and such that I tasted from the garden. It might be broccoli or cauliflower or something that they don't normally get at home. And then other kids say, I want my mom to make that too. I like to thank the garden because it's given us more healthier food for us. Instead of just buying it for the store, we can garden more and make more so we don't have to pay our spend on our money. We can just get it out of the garden and make healthy food for us and stay healthy. I love that when I come in and I talk to them about fruits and vegetables, they're very fired up about it. They can't tell me, we just came back from the garden. You won't believe what we saw out there and the things that we raised. It's real exciting for us as cafeteria and people who are trying to get these children to move forward and get away from processed food and into whole healthy food. It's very exciting for us. And when we see them go through the line and actually go outside and watch them consume these products, extremely good. Oh, the feedback is this, when are we going to the garden? Is it our day to go to the garden? You know, we, we have this, we, we planted the, the, the peas, we planted the, the, the tomatoes, we planted the carrots. When do we go? When can we go? So, there, so we have a rotation when they go out and who's responsible for whatever they, they planted. So it's an amazing thing because they're eager to go. They're eager to see, hmm, how much is that plant grown? Hmm, I wonder what that tastes like. And, hmm, is that mint? I like that. First thing they want to do is go to the garden, you know. They like the garden more than P.E. And what kid likes a garden more than P.E.? The first thing we do when we come outside, I have to tell them, hey, we have to get our exercise in first. It goes along with healthy eating and nurturing that garden. So some of our problem students, this is what I use now to keep them on track. You know, hey, if you do this, if you are okay in class, if your teacher tell me you're doing well, we can go to the garden. And it really helps. The educators themselves are running with these programs. And every school we go to, we see something different. Our garden here at Elbridge Gale has just kept growing and growing ever since we got our American Heart Association addition to the garden. We have uh, 18 garden beds now. We have uh, six, uh, 16 uh, um, hydroponic beds. We have one floating hydroponic bed. Um, plus, we have worm bins. The kids are out here pretty much on a weekly basis, most classes. They are doing everything from planting to harvesting to enjoying the different produce that we grow here. Uh, we have rain barrels, we capture rainfall, we use that water to help water the garden beds and keep our aquaponics going. We have koi that provide the nutrients for the plants that we grow on top. We grow herbs on top and the children are involved in the harvesting. They're just involved pretty much in every aspect of the garden. Um, they will bring back scraps from the cafeteria from their lunch and we feed the worms and we put the compost in the garden. We do uh, salsa parties and we have um, smoothie day where we grab our fruits and vegetables from outside and we um, make them in the classroom and the kids just love it. Some schools have green markets, which is fabulous. So they're figuring out the full circle of agriculture basically is that they can have these green markets, sell their produce to the parents, the parents bring it home, but now they have the money to reinvest back into their program and they're becoming self-sufficient as well. It's, it's amazing, it's just incredible, and it's really inspiring to watch how everyone runs with this in a different direction and embraces it in their own way, expands on it, makes it better, makes it bigger. It's been a huge like starter for us as far as expanding 
our green initiative and expanding uh, the idea of this kind of project-based learning. You know, when students do something hands-on, they get it and they are emotionally invested and now they're motivated. So if I can emotionally um, get them invested through hands-on gardening to be conscious of their life choices and to move more and eat better, why not? It's, you know, common sense tells me, let's get you gardening, let's get you accountable. It's particularly concerning if children are developing unhealthy lifestyles early in life because we know that the longer people are exposed to unhealthy risk factors, the, long, the more likely they are to develop cardiovascular disease later in life. So if children are developing these risk factors early, that's a longer time in their life that they'll be exposed. And that's leading to certain experts suggesting that this generation of children may have higher rates of cardiovascular disease than the generation of their parents and may potentially have shorter lifespans than the generation of their parents because of it. Every kid gets a chance to take something home, something they've never had before. For example, eggplant. Many of our kids have never eaten eggplant and they share that with their parents and their parents have never eaten that. And so now our parents are involved in trying new things. The kids are willing to try new things. The cafeteria staff helps us in whatever we cultivate and whatever we harvest, we take to the cafeteria and serve the entire school. And that has been an incredible impact for us because the kids are now willing to try something they never would have tried if they'd gone to the grocery store. How many children saw these? And that's what we talk about in the classrooms too. You go to the store with your mom and dad you see all of these things on the aisle and that's the end of it but when we do these kind of programs with them they come back and they go oh there was three different kinds of cauliflower we had white cauliflower there was red there was green now they're recognizing that their fruits and vegetables are in families cruciferous family their um, herb family and they have the opportunity to smell and taste all of these herbs and that they raise and that they don't all have to be cooked. We can eat them raw. When the cafeteria serves peppers, the kids love the peppers. Before, they wouldn't have touched it, but when we grew it in the garden and they were able to take it out of the garden and they were able to sample it when we do our little rounds, rotations, now when we go to the cafeteria, the first thing they grab are the peppers. I live in a place where there's not, well, we don't have a backyard. Like I live in an apartment, so my parents are planning on to move somewhere where there's a backyard and we can plant things. Eat. When we made smoothies, we were learning about the different colors, and it helped me understand why we needed to have all those different fruits and vegetables. This is what's going to change the generation in which we live in now, and the generation that's coming up. You know, their parents, their grandparents did the best that they could, but now that we teach them at the elementary level, they're going to be more prone now to want their own garden, and when they grow up, do the same thing for their kids as we're doing for them, and I think it's going to make for a healthy America. What does the garden mean to me? To me, the garden is a beautiful place because it grows vegetables that keeps us healthy and strong. It shows us a change how something so small can and will become something big. It teaches us to be patient because the seeds take time to grow. Individuals need to consume more fruits and vegetables. That has ripple effects in different directions. From a health perspective, eating more fruits and vegetables means being healthier. From an educational perspective, children in teaching gardens, um, it has the effect of helping children learn because the teaching garden is a place to learn, but it also has the effect of children performing better in the classroom in general. The teaching garden is an amazing program. I'm so glad to be a part of it and I hope everyone gets a chance to see the amazing things that are being done through the American Heart Association. The domino effect of, of what this is doing is just incredible and I, I do believe that it's rolling over to the parents and it will roll over to future generations.